Hi. Hi. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing great. Good. Doing great. Uh, so uh, earlier on in the program, we actually got to talk with uh, Catherine Isabel, and she wanted to say hi to her little duckling. Oh, what a queen. What a queen. <laughs> she is the mother duck. So and we are her ducklings. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Was that, you guys was are that, like, sure. Was that how it felt on set? Was she like the mother duck to you guys on set? Sort of, you know. And, you know, Catherine, she's been in this business for a long time. And especially, like, she's she's huge in the horror genre. So I, I kind of feel like she's sort of like, come on, ducklings, like, this way with, like, a bunch of us, so including myself. Um, especially when we went to Comic-Con last year uh, for the first time as a group. Um I think she she was definitely like sort of like holding her hand in all of it. Um, oh, that's that's fantastic. Does does yeah. Grand Magus actually translate to Mother Duck? <laughs> I mean, to, to Catherine Isabel, it does, and you know what? That's <laughs> that's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! So with the Order season two, like I felt we got to know a lot of characters better, but I felt like. Gabrielle just got to have all the stories. Uh, like, <laughs> you think about it. She got to have her own Ken doll for a bit. She then uh, got to be a werewolf. And, uh, you know, also uh, you got to, yourself got to play Randall playing Gabrielle. And you got to play Gabrielle reacting to Randall playing Gabrielle. So what was it like to play so much, including Midnight, in this season? Yeah, you know, when you put it that way, I guess it is sort of a lot, isn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, um, well, like you kind of said, like, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be playing like such a multi-dimensional character. And I feel like in season one, we did get a little bit of that, um, sort of like, um, one of our directors, uh, Leslie, she was sort of interpreting in a way of like, the princess is becoming a queen and that's sort of like what what we kind of uh pictured gabrielle's arc being for season one but i didn't know the queen would turn into a werewolf like that was just um i, I think a shock to myself as well as the audience so um it was really really a lot of fun <laughs> Yeah, it gotta be. I got. I gotta believe it's. A, it must be amazing for you to be able to go from you know uh, your part in season one to then when you start getting the scripts and seeing how how big Gabrielle became in this season. Like, were you like super pumped going into that, or did like did, were you aware of how big she was going to be in season two? No, I ha I I literally had no idea. Like Dennis had mentioned, he had a few ideas for Gabrielle for season two, but he he didn't mention anything about. Um, becoming a werewolf or uh, any detail to how much of the storyline um, Gabrielle would carry. Um, so it was definitely a different experience. Like I feel like with season one, I sort of knew what the like the height of my arc was going to be like with um, episode 107 where I'm like torturing a series of different people. I kind of knew that I'm like, okay, this is the meat of it for me. Um, sorry to any vegans, um, <laughs> need of it, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, um, I felt like that was uh, the meal, um, but with season two, I felt like I definitely had, like, many meals within the entire season, so it was kind of almost like, I don't know, I felt like I was, like, running a marathon, and I had to, like, kind of, um, work on my stamina a little bit more this season, for sure. Oh, totally. Yeah, she had many meals. Uh, I'd say Gabrielle was pretty full by the end of the season, definitely. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now, uh, we got an email in from Walter P. who says, Hi, Larisa. Beautiful, talented, right on. Love your stuff. Nice lady. Stay healthy. Nice lady. Nice lady. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah, with the, uh, with the character, with, with Gabrielle, though, what I really enjoyed is that not only did you get to do so much stuff, but because of the things you were doing, you really got to play the range with this season. Like you got to have some great comedic moments with Randall, but then when you become midnight, who red, like there's like, it's, there's no time for comedy there. It's all drama as midnight. And then of course, with what Gabrielle's going on in her head at the same time, a lot of like deep, dark stuff. So was it fun playing the range of this character this year? Oh, absolutely. It's funny that you mentioned like the comedy element of it because um, 
like last year I felt like I was definitely going around like comic-con and doing press things and and promoting the show as a comedy and so many people I kid you not so many people and the press were like um are you sure and like sort of challenging me on that and me I guess it was just because of like where where Gabrielle was standing in all of it to her it's a comedy like the things that I got to say as Gabrielle was a lot of like the punchlines and a lot of like the blanket of comedy on top um, and then when I rewatched um, season one uh, before season two came out, I was like, wow, it's really not a comedy. Like I sort of, I was like, sort of like beating myself up of like, why would I go around promoting this as a comedy? Um, but then you look at like sort of like episode one with like the whole um, cheerleading aspect of it. Um, it. It has those big elements of comedy in it. But um, yeah, in terms of like Midnight, all jokes aside from Midnight, it's all about serving justice and about righteousness and uh, playing with like that sort of Shakespearean language, um, which is like the completely opposite of the spectrum with Gabrielle's like very Valley Girl um, sort of vibe um, was a really fun, fun way to end the season for me. Well, like you were saying, like, I understand why you would say that the show is a comedy because honestly, one of the reasons I love the show and me and Andrew have talked about this quite a bit about why we like the show so much is the level of comedy in it. And not only that it is there, but it doesn't feel forced. It feels natural. Mm. Like, Tons of natural funny moments. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Like, like your character, Gabrielle, like a lot of her scenes, like a lot of those one liners that she like, she's got the best singers in a lot of those moments. And it's like, and that's that's saying something with, with somebody like Randall around who usually gets some pretty good. You know, Absolutely. You know, so like, Absolutely. you could definitely tell, especially with like the Randall Gabrielle scenes, like there's right. sort of like a math sort of going on with it. So when they put me um, and Randall together, I was like, I never thought of that, but like what fun this is for like the comedy aspect of it for sure. Oh yeah. And I, I do like the, uh, the opposites attract kind of situation between Gabrielle and, and Randall as well. Like, and how that's playing out. Um, cause like I could see that going either, what either way, like either becoming, you know, uh, in a, going into a relationship or just becoming like the best friends, like the bestest of friends. And it, and either way I would be happy because I just like seeing the two, your two characters together because it's so much fun to watch. And now this new layer, of course, with Midnight, that, you know, you're going to have some, like, I really want a season three because I want to see you as Midnight kicking some mm -hmm. ass because that combination of Midnight's anger and Gabriella's, like, pure attitude about everything and ownership is going to be, like, that's a hot mess of, of action. No, completely. I was I was thinking about that today, actually, because there's been... Um, like fans and other press outlets asking me like, oh, what do you see for season three for Gabrielle? What do you see for season three? And honestly, it just kind of came to me of like, I'm interested in knowing how Gabrielle is going to, well, this is a spoiler alert right now, but how Gabrielle is going to deal with the killing of Alyssa. Because I feel like she, you know, she's, she murdered Kyle, but I feel like her murdering Alyssa means something much deeper to her. Right. And you kind of see that what happens to her at the end of the season where she, you know, she sort of like is covered in blood and she comes to a realization of what had happened to her, especially because it, it wasn't really her. So I'm, I'm just really curious as to what, how she's going to go about it and how she's going to heal or recover or not from, from what she has done to, to Alyssa. Uh, totally. Uh, we got an email in from Ben from Santa Rosa, California, who obviously is a longtime listener of Geekard. He says, love Larisa, hate Warrior Nun, love the old man, oh. love Geekard, wishing Mr. Green had his tasty meats available for this weekend BBQ. Where is Mr. Green's exotic bird book available? My God, he's calling jokes back from like three years ago. That wow. Was, that's fantastic. Wow. Deep what? cuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you very much, Ben <laughs> Jay. Uh, but you, you brought up the, uh, the uh, Gabrielle Alyssa relationship, yeah. era, and it feels very much like there's a frenemy vibe throughout that. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's how, that's how Gabrielle is. Like her friends are still, you know, she kind of holds them at bay <laughs> as well. And I feel like, 
it was best shown at the rager during the singing scene when you guys are uh singing the karaoke yeah Yeah. what was it like playing that scene um it was really cool it actually just came from um chris uh our uh, um executive producer from netflix was like hey the girls can sing because um i have like a musical theater background and sarah has a beautiful voice and she could play guitar and she was like the girls can sing you guys figure it out and, and put it in the show somehow just figure it out and <laughs> i think dennis and Shelly were kind of like uh and and i think they wanted to find a way of um incorporating into the show but really in a sneaky way and I felt like they did a really really great job of it because um you know coming from like a musical background and I I was a part of a musical show for so long it was always like you know there's sort of steps to it you pre-record the song you lip sync to the song and you do it you you perform it on the day but they went about it a whole completely different way we sang it live um we did some like improv lines in between like the you know the sing bitch and my turn was <laughs> was all improv so um it was really it was really cool and it, it it came out really i think in my opinion um spontaneous and i think that's what they were sort of going for yeah no it was very it was very natural in the scene which is good because sometimes when you know certain shows want to work in a singing element it's very it feels very much like and now here's the <laughs> point where we kind of take you out of reality and they're singing but this felt very much like i oh, know it's two girls in a karaoke machine makes sense fits in the scene yeah it's Louisa and sarah on a saturday night which they- <laughs> we've done you know <laughs> Just a oh. regular weekend. Well, seeing the, I saw the the the, uh, the behind the scenes uh, videos that you put up on Instagram. It seems like you guys had a lot of time, a lot of fun singing and dancing behind the scenes there too, right? Yeah, we. It's definitely, um, you know, a, a fun a fun show. And I remember at Comic Con, we were with a di- we were different we were with a different show, and we were kind of mingling. And our cast was was very loud and very like we were laughing a lot and just one of the other cast members from another show I won't say what show but they were like is this how it is all the time like do you guys have this much fun all the time and I went yes yes we do um yeah we're just a big family um so we're really really lucky Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, because it, it's like I, I w- we got to talk to uh, Thomas Elms a, a few weeks ago and I, I was saying about like how the show, something about the show, it always seems like you guys are having fun. Even like, even when you guys are fighting each other and, you know, and being catty and all these things like towards each other, it, it still feels like when you're watching it that you guys you know, are having a blast while you're doing it, you know, because you guys seem to, to be that friendly with each other, you know, behind the scenes, it, it comes through on the screen. Uh, that must be a lot, a lot of fun and rewarding for you as an actor to have uh, that, you know, to be on a show like that where, you, you know, you are friends with everybody backstage. Oh, especially because we're on set with each other, like, 12 hours a day so it's it were it's, when i say we're really lucky to like each other i really actually mean we're really really lucky <laughs> so i definitely don't take it for granted at all oh my gosh no well, that's great well uh Larisa, i want to thank you for coming on the show tonight and uh, i hope that when this whole situation this global pandemic situation that we're in blows over that you get to go out dancing you know what? I second that. I second that. I really hope I get to go out dancing as well. All right. Well, have yourself a great night. Get, uh, have yourself a great night. <laughs> Gabrielle, Larisa. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. sorry Larisa. <laughs> it happens all the freaking time. We've been doing this for 10 years, and I'll be like, we'll have an actor on, and I'll just start calling by their character name, and it's like, why am I doing that? Don't do that. It's okay. My aunties, does that. they do that to me all the time. Oh. But it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> okay, Larisa. Well, thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. Thanks, Larisa.